lifting up Jesus and opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, the United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio, here with James Jacob Prash. Jacob, one of the believers asked, what is platonic dualism and how has it affected Christianity? It would not be correct exactly to term the dualism that was prolific in Hellenistic thought in the first century and the pre-first century church and during the time of Plato himself and Aristotle and so forth. It would not be correct to term it uh, platonic dualism. It was simply the dualism that existed in esoteric Greek thought at the time, which Plato absorbed into his philosophical system. The church was, by Augustine, Platonized. He took Christianity and he basically reframed it and to a degree rewrote, rewrote it almost in terms of Platonic philosophy to accommodate the political ambitions of Constantine's pseudo-Christianizing the Roman Empire. We've explained this before on our teaching on the poison of Augustine. We've also explained <clears throat> how these ideas became uh, prolific within the early church. For instance, the danger of this kind of dualism. In Corinth, people were saying things, if you read the epistles of the Corinthians, I can go out and, 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 and get drunk and, and, and live uh, an immoral life and, and be with cult prostitutes and things like that, because that's only the flesh. That's only the old nature. I'm a new creation. The new creation can't sin. It doesn't matter what the old one does. Well, this went against what the New Testament said. We pointed the previous teaching to John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Greeks had a concept of the Logos, no problem. But when you got to John chapter 1, verse 14, the Word became flesh. The Logos became socks. The Greeks would have freaked out. The logos became sarks. The word became, they would have freaked out. No, God's impassable. We've got this dualism of the physical and the spiritual. Everything physical is bad. Everything spiritual is good. Now, ignorant Christians began equating this with the old and new nature. No, no, the Lord redeems the whole nature. The body is for the Lord. Now you only sleep with your wife or your husband, etc. Christians don't get inebriated or, or, or stoned on drugs as the Delphic Oracle did. They had a form of hallucinogen <clears throat> at Delphi, near, near Corinth, where they would inhale fumes um, from, from sulfur pits, much the same as people with low-class drug abusers would sniff glue with toluene today or ether to have hallucinations. That, that was going on in ancient Greece in the sulfuric, with the sulfuric inhalant. <clears throat> the Delphi Oracle would have prophecies when she was hallucinating from inhaling these hallucinogen-inducing fumes. Well, this is what the people were saying. We can do this stuff. That's only the flesh. The new nature is different. This duel is we're to the church in Corinth and Paul had to correct it. John 1 was addressing this wrong kind of thinking. John was written to Jews and he was saying, look, Jews have this kind of view, an incarnational Christology. It was at odds with the Greek view that God was impassable. <clears throat> the enfleshment of God was established in the Old Testament with the angel of the Lord, the Metatron, who Jacob wrestled with, and so forth, physical incarnations of Christ in the Old Testament. Let's push forward. We've warned about this coming into the church in many times and many ways, but it certainly exists today among ultra-Pentecostals and hyper-charismatics. Bearing in mind, I am not a cessationist. I believe in the ongoing ministry of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I do believe in biblical charismata. I do believe there's tongues, prophecy, so forth. I just don't believe most of what we see today is real, but I don't deny what's in Scripture. I also believe in spirit baptism, properly understood. I just don't believe in the 
hyper-Pentecostal doctrines of spirit baptism. I don't believe that if somebody doesn't pray in tongues, it proves they're not saved or things like that. Or because somebody does pray in tongues, it proves they are. You can go to Africa and watch witch doctors speak in tongues. Leave those things aside for one moment. I'm just establishing that I'm not anti-Pentecostal or anti-charismatic. I'm moderately Pentecostal, moderately charismatic myself. But let's look now. When you see these doctrines that came from Christian science, and that via E.W. Kenyon and some of the followers of William Branham were absorbed into the church and adopted by heretical false teachers, demonically inspired people like Kenneth Copeland. My body's lying to me. I don't have a fever. <laughs> That's only physical where I'm a spirit being. This is the same kind of dualism. You do have a fever. No, my body's lying to me. I confess and believe. This has roots in the same kind of dualism. The Christian science cult, which is neither Christian or science, is based on it. And a modification of it, a variation of it, courtesy of E.W. Kenyon and his followers, came into the Pentecostal movement. Now, early Pentecostals largely rejected this, but not all of them. The word faith preachers, the money preachers, particularly Kenneth Hagin and, and, and Kenneth Copeland, his clone, they propagated this in the church and they're still doing it. But the philosophical roots of this and the theological origins of this kind of problem go back very much to the first century church where this Greek dualism, this Hellenistic dualism that was prolific throughout the Greco-Roman world and that was basically uh, pseudo-Christianized later by Augustine, uh, using platonic philosophy that's the ontogeny of it that's where it comes from it's not new always remember as it says in ecclesiastes there's nothing new under the sun thank you for your question my name is jacob prash god bless